are joined now by the one and only uh, Nathan hey. Robinson, editor. Hey, Ben. Am I coming I through okay? Yeah. How are you doing, Nathan? Oh, good. I, I, I am so well. I'm sorry I'm late. Oh, uh, no worries. It happens. Um, you were having some internet problems? Oh, it's a disaster. New Orleans internet is horrible. Um, and uh, this is what we've learned is even in the central business district, the internet cuts out every time it rains, which uh, it does constantly. So yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Anyway, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here on my phone. So if it's horrible quality, I'm sorry. Uh, no, fair enough. Um, so yeah, I'm really glad uh, that, that you are here. Uh, and so, so I should say, uh, I've known Nathan for uh, a couple of years. He, uh, he gave me a very nice blurb on uh, my first book, uh, gave them an argument, Logic to the Left. Uh, and um, I don't think it's a state secret that we don't always agree on everything, but- uh, but, but we uh, have a lot of fun disagreeing. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I think that's right. I think we do. <laughs> and uh, we respect each other a lot. I, 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 yeah, I... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, and 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 I've I've also been saying for years, right, that 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 when I say that that the left should, um, or some people on the left, right, should should care more about getting the arguments right, that uh, mm -hmm. uh, that that we should care more about like actually taking the time to debunk uh, right wing nonsense that might seem like mm. obvious nonsense to us, but does convince a lot of people, uh, and making the case for um, for the sort of basic importance of what the left is advocating. Mm. Uh, very few people do that uh, as, as well as Nathan. I've been, uh, been reading oh, uh, for, for years. The uh, Yeah, this is kind of what brought us, has brought us together, right? Is that we have both uh, spent our time with this shared conviction, this shared project of, you know, having the left take arguments more seriously and be rigorous and um, you know even and even intra left differences we hash out through actually trying to figure out well what do we really think why do we think it is this correct rather than is this the uh, the the standard line that we all just repeat without thinking yeah absolutely uh, and and so because I have been reading for years these uh, these wonderful like take you know ten thousand word takedowns of, uh, <laughs> various right-wing ghouls uh, that, uh, that you've written. Uh, and liberal and, ghouls. Liberal and, and liberal ghouls, ghouls. that's true. That's, that's, also, that's also very true, right? Uh, and uh, so, so, so I was particularly happy to, to recently get a chance to, uh, to co-write one of them. I believe that you have the book that we were reviewing there. I have, I have it right here. Now so, you are the reason that we that we had this, right? I believe you're the one who originally discovered this bowl of bowl of spiders, as you refer to it. Yeah, I uh, I had said, uh, you know, was was getting up to about a hundred people on the Patreon, and and so I was kind of joking about doing some equivalent of like a food bucket challenge or something for getting up to that threshold. Uh, and then uh, decided that I could do something much more gross than working through an actual food bucket. <laughs> Which would be reading every word of arguing with socialists. Arguing with socialists by Glenn by, by Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck. Yes, we should say in quotes. Yeah, by Glenn Beck in the sense that uh, if you crack open the book, it tells you that Glenn Beck is a uh, registered <laughs> trademark. Uh, but if you actually look inside there, it has, yeah, three three ghostwriters plus. Two designers plus an illustrator. So a team of six people in addition to Glenn Beck working <laughs> on the book. Yeah. Um, so, so in the review, we kind of use Glenn Beck and Beck's writers interchangeably. Uh, but this was, this was clearly a team effort. Uh, and, you know, it's a small thing, but it's worth dwelling on. Because honestly, that's something I've thought about even just doing this podcast. Uh, that actually like making this happen and getting all the YouTube videos uh, edited and the illustrations and everything else uh, involves like the efforts of, of, of several people. Yeah. Right? Um, you know, well, and I have the same thing running a magazine, right? I, yeah. I mean, I, you know, where everyone thinks that I run the magazine and the other the labor of other people is, gets hidden. And you really see how like, the individual entrepreneur gets 
elevated and all of the all of the work that everyone is doing to to maintain that the, the whole institution just sort of disappears from sight so yes it's a wonderful it's a wonderful microcosm of how capitalism works is that uh, these people blend back I don't think probably wrote a single word of this book. No, like, like I expect uh, it's probably not like Art of the Deal where Trump may or may not have read the book. Uh, you know, like I expect that he at least like sort of read through it to sign off on yeah. it. That would be my best guess. Uh, but yeah. Well, he, even uh, has, he even has the little, the little, on every page, it has a little approval sticker, right? <laughs> have you noticed it had in the, in the little corners, it says approval by Glenn. Um, yeah, you usually don't see that in books, like the uh, the the candidate approving the message at the end of an ad. Approved, approved. Yeah, <laughs> I endorsed this message. <laughs> Be interested to go through it and see if there are any pages that we left off the approval. Uh, but but yeah, absolutely. Like thinking about how many people wrote Glenn Beck's uh, book. Thinking about it again, again, even how many people are involved in um, a you know a magazine like like Current Affairs mm -hmm. that is. Uh, because we we live in an unjust world, like doesn't exactly have the circulation of the New York Times, uh, but like how many Someday. people have to uh, have to be involved in making that happen, uh, or how many people are involved? Even getting a podcast off the ground every week really yeah. puts into perspective yeah. the worship of CEOs of corporations who. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, who rely on the labor of thousands yeah. of people as like unique <laughs> we, job creators and innovators, as if as if Steve Jobs back in the day was just um, was was just single handedly tinkering in his workshop. We uh, we read a a feature that I really liked a couple months ago called "Texts from Elon Musk to His Engineering Team," where it was just things like, "Can you make it fly by end of business Friday?" And and it was just all these things where you know Elon Musk talks about doing these things. He saw Elon Musk is making this, and you're like, "Oh, his engineers! He doesn't know anything. He's he's literally telling the engineers, can you make this?' And then they have to work around the clock to make <laughs> his dreams come true." Yeah, well, of course, Elon Musk is a particularly good example because oftentimes um, when he unveils things, they don't actually work. So the whole process is kind of reminiscent of like kind of the worst of uh, a Soviet style central planning system where it's like, oh, you know, Comrade Dropoff says that you need to make this work <laughs> by the party Congress, but Comrade, yeah. it's impossible. Yeah. Well, I don't know, find a way. Yeah, capitalism is central planning. This is what we need. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's-, that's uh, It's just unjust central planning as Lee Phillips, uh, you know, you put, you put the, uh, into our review, the, uh, the citation of People's Republic of Walmart and the way that uh, people like Beck overlook the extent to which giant, not just non-democratic bureaucracies uh, already do all the economic planning. Um, yeah, yeah, ex exactly, right? Somebody is going to be making decisions, right? There are going to be people in any economic system beyond the unit of like a couple of people tinkering their garage or something uh, and bartering. Right, there are going to be some yeah. people making decisions and other people carrying out those decisions. Uh, the real core question, as I've always seen it, is whether the was whether the decision makers have some sort of democratic accountability to yeah. everybody else. But of course, right. that's that's a that's an issue that's uh, given pretty short shrift in uh, arguing with socialists. And I think one of the things that we yes. realized very quickly is that uh, despite the title, neither Beck nor anybody who uh, wrote the book ever seems to have actually argued with the socialists. They don't seem to know uh, yes, what the well, arguments are. Don't you find that this, I mean, you know, I, I resent you for bringing this book into my life, um, but when I saw that you were reviewing it, I was kind of excited um, because I like arguing with people as, as you do, and it's always, and I like engaging with the other side's case. But when I got a hold of this book, um, and just to say, we've got, in the latest Current Affairs, we have our review of this book written, and it's really, really fun because we imitate the graphic design of the book as well as the, uh, um, as well as, as well as reviewing it in a, in a straightforward way. This book is really kind of paradoxical because on the one hand, it's, it's dumber than you might think, but it's also more intelligent than you might think. Yeah, it's, that, 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 that's, yeah. That, that's right, right? So, so I, I want to back up a little bit here to, sure. to, to set this up. Uh, since actually uh, in writing this this review uh, and in the spirit of of actually crediting people and not being like Glenn Beck, should also say that in addition to 
my work and your work on this. Uh, the, the illustrator really... Uh, ah, Nick Sorotich, yes. He did a great job imitating the art of this, uh, of this book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, but in writing it, uh, your sacrifice was actually greater than mine because uh, I only read Glenn Beck's book but you actually also wrote, read a, uh, a whole biography of Beck. So, so you did much more immersion <laughs> in the mind of Glenn Beck than I did. Uh, and, and I was wondering if you could set that up a little bit, like, like okay, yeah. so people, people might kind of remember sure. Beck as the crazy man who was mm -hmm. drawing things on uh, chalkboards on Fox News during the Obama administration uh, that, that looked like, uh, they were. They looked like the scene in the movie where somebody is descended into madness, and they think that everything is connected. <laughs> yeah, very quite literally. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very much like that. Um, and and a lot of people, I think, on the left think that oh, Beck is just well, his star has fallen, which is true. But yeah. then I think the thing they make a mistake about is that his star hasn't fallen so much that he's not, unfortunately, right now influencing lots more people than we are. Right, like that, uh, well, that, yes, that's still true, right? That's even the sort of second tier conservative pundits have like 10 times our audience. It's really quite... <laughs> yeah, exactly, quite... exactly, which is why, which is why it's worth, uh, worth engaging yeah. with. Yeah, so I, I, I get this with the, like what I talk about Dinesh D'Souza too, like yeah, he was yeah. pushed out of the conservative movement and is seen as ridiculous in the kind of mainstream conservative movement. But like, you know, and his movies are like a flop by blockbuster standards but they're like you know he has millions of people buy buy his books these yeah people, well obama's america matter. was actually in theaters yeah yeah i have a <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, so exactly yeah. like unfortunately like compared to yeah. the category of the population that uh, reads Jacobin or Current Affairs or watches <laughs> movies that we like, you know, <laughs> that are about politics. Yes. Uh, you know, yeah. like a, a conservative whose star has fallen uh, means a conservative who's still reaching an awful lot of people and we should engage with. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but I, I yeah. just wondered if you could well, speak for a yeah, minute. Yeah, so to, on Glenn Beck's career, there's yeah. really this, uh, this uh, book called Common Nonsense um, is, it was released during the sort of peak of Glenn Beck's career. And, he was very interesting for a conservative pundit because he came out of the world of morning zoo radio. Um, and in fact, he was kind of a prodigy in morning zoo radio. He, he was obsessed with Orson Welles as a child and the War of the Worlds. And even his company is named after Orson Welles' Mercury uh, Theater. And I mean, the, the sort of craft of radio began to interest him uh, a great deal. And he became, as like a teenager, the youngest morning zoo host in the, in the country. And I mean, he really... He, his career, his radio career had real ups and downs because he had a drug problem. But, um, but he was, I, I think it's worth noting that he, he had some kind of mastery of this, of the craft of creating compelling, I mean, not the sort of radio that I would ever listen to, but the sort of radio that consists of like sexist humor and parody songs and funny voices and and all of that stuff and using the all the bells and whistles yeah um, it's, it's 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 entertaining which uh yeah which, which which is an important point right because yes beck has always known how to put out a good show 